Hello, welcome to this lesson in engineering mechanics. We're going to solve this problem, our first problem in particle equilibrium. Notice it doesn't look like there's any particles in this problem. You don't see any little tiny particles floating around. What we mean by particle equilibrium, again, is that this box here is 220 pounds and there's two cables attaching it at various angles, at two different angles to the walls, but ultimately um, this box can be represented uh, by at a single point because that box can be collapsed down to a single point uh, that basically has that weight. Also notice the junction of all of these three uh, these three uh, cables here can also be looked at at a specific point and it's that really that point that's not moving. If everything is is, is in static equi equilibrium, the box is not falling, the box is not being pulled up. This intersection of all three tensions is not really moving anywhere. Everything is completely still. That's what we call equilibrium. Now what we want to do in this particular problem is we want to find what is the tension in cable A and what is the tension in cable B. Now one thing you need to train yourself is anytime you see the word tension or T like this, it's basically just asking you for the force because these are uh, cables or some kind of string or something that's pulling, right? So the, there's a force being pulled on this ring this way and on, and on this ring this way along A and B lines. But those forces, when we use strings and cables, a lot of times it's called tension. So just kind of, you know, uh, keep that in mind. Uh, don't let that confuse you too much. So these guys are not at the same angle, but we know that this is a situation that could exist in real life, that this guy can be suspended from two cables at different angles. We want to find out how much tension is in this one and how much tension is in this one. In other words, how many pounds of force are pulling this way and this way to make this guy uh, uh, in equilibrium. So the only way you can really do this, first of all, is we want to draw a free body diagram. Okay? So let's represent this little ring as we can draw it as a ring if we want. That's no problem. You can fill it in as a circle. But anyhow, we know that there's a force acting straight down on this guy because that's the weight. So we simply draw that as an arrow and we write that that's 220 pounds. All right? And we know that there's a cable attached to that or some kind of string, so we know that that's going off at a 25 degree angle. So we do our best to angle this up, right? And we call this T sub B. That's the tension pulling along that line there. And the angle here is very important, so that's 25 degrees. We're going to label that in our free body diagram. Going to this direction, we have the same sort of thing. So we draw this guy. This is going to be the tension in cable A. And also there's an angle here, very important. 20 degrees. That's basically all you need for the free body diagram. Notice how you've you've eliminated all the extra clutter of this picture and you're focusing on what's important. You don't need to draw the walls here. There's no wall over here. And there's uh, basically it's just zooming in on the situation. We have a ring here 